Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about the third and final year of my six-figure debt-free journey and how I managed to pay off $73,000 in eight months. Be sure to watch the videos on year one and two for the full picture because my strategies and resources differed for each year. So this time around I was on my debt-free journey for the past two years and as you can imagine I was ready to be finished. So because of this I made some drastic changes to my lifestyle and spending habits to get out of debt as soon as possible. So the first thing that I eliminated from my life was vacations and if you know anything about me like vacations are a huge part of my life. However as you know it's a very expensive pastime. Case in point check out my European budget to see how much I spent on my last vacation. So prior to this year I was allowing myself to go on vacations because as you know paying off debt sucks essentially <laughs> so I needed something to motivate me and keep me going on my journey. So I did go on vacations prior to this however knowing how much they cost and the fact that I was ready to be done I cut them out completely. The other thing I did in this final year was to curb my shopping habits. If you had a look around my channel, you may have already figured out that I enjoy shopping. Not necessarily shopping, but the aesthetic and user experience of having nice things. So to stop myself from shopping, I went on a no buy year. So that means in the categories that I chose, I could not purchase anything. And the reason that I chose these categories is because I already had an excess of them. So even though I enjoyed purchasing things in these categories, I didn't necessarily need them. The categories were makeup because I have a lifetime supply of makeup so I'm good there. Fashion clothes because most people already have enough clothes and so did I. Shoes and hair care products. If you want to know how much money I managed to save by completely cutting these things out of my budget, then I will leave a link in the description below. The last thing I did was to go on a low buy year in addition to the no buy year. So low buys essentially just mean lowering your spending overall. So for me, that meant taking a look at my budget and realizing that I spent too much money in the category of shopping outside of the categories that I mentioned just now and just making a concert making a conscious effort to decrease my spending there. By doing those three things that I just mentioned, I was able to put a lot more money towards my student loan debts. But in addition to that, I want to talk about my income because as you know, that plays a huge part in your ability to pay off debt. So during this year, my sources of income from most to least were my salary, of course. In addition to that, I got a bonus from work and that is because I started a new job, which I think I've made a video about the fact that I have since quit that job, but that job gave me a significant bonus and I used the entire bonus to put towards my student loan debt and that made a huge debt. My next source of income was interest from my bank account and this was prior to current times obviously when interest rates were much higher. So like I said before, they were on 1%. So I got a significant amount of interest from money that I was saving at the time. Next up was cashback from Rakuten. And if you don't already know, Rakuten is essentially a cashback program slash app that allows you to get a certain percentage of your money back on items that you purchase regularly online or in stores. If you're interested in using that if you don't already have it, which I imagine most people do, then you can check out the link in the description box. And lastly, I sold things that I no longer needed on eBay, Craigslist, etc. And all that money went towards my student loan debts. Another thing I want to mention in regards to paying off my student loan debt is that I used a portion of my savings during this last year to get rid of the last of my debt. And the reason that I did this was because one, I wanted to get rid of my debt more than anything <laughs> at the time. So it was very important to me. And the second reason was because I determined that my job was secure enough that I did not need at the time, six months of emergency money set aside. So once I determined that, I slowly, I couldn't do it all at once because I just didn't <laughs> 
have the reserve for that. Um, I slowly dwindled away at my emergency savings until I had around two months worth of emergency fund left. And the reason that I was okay with this was because essentially, I knew that once all of my debt was gone, all of my income could then be put towards savings. So my entire paycheck from the point that I was debt free would go towards my savings so I could immediately build back up my emergency fund to six months or whatever amount I saw fit at the time. So with all the things that I mentioned just now, I was able to put away $9,132 on average every month towards my student loan debt. And because this was the average, that means that some months I was able to put more and some months less. If you wanna see exactly how much I put towards my student loan every month during this period, I will leave a link below as well in the description box. And that is how I managed to pay off the last $73,000 of my student loan debt in eight months. If you're on a student loan debt-free journey or any journey towards being debt-free, then I want you to know that it is absolutely worth it. Whatever sacrifice and hardships that you're going through now to get debt-free is worth it in the end. Ever since I've been debt-free, I've been able to accumulate wealth entirely exponentially faster than when I did have debt. So keep on chugging if you're in that boat. Tell me a little bit more about your debt-free journey. What sacrifices have you made so far? And have you found it to be worthwhile? Let me know in the description box below and I'll see you next week in the next video. Bye-bye.